Hey, thanks for joining me today. Uh, today I'm going to cover a couple um, different API calls. The first one is a WIN HTTP request, and then the second one is the XML HTTP request. And uh, I'm not going to go real deep into them. I've covered the WIN HTTP request several times. Um, the XML re HTTP request I didn't really cover yet before. Uh, I think I've mentioned it, but I wanted to, to do it just at least one example here. So let's back up a bit. Um, Hopefully you've seen other videos where we've 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 walked through uh, API calls. Um, we have a whole webinar focused on that, so I'll link to it. But you can check that out. It's a really good intro. Uh, I still am going to give a high level thing. So you know, any browser call, um, every there's a lot of other types of calls, right? But a, a browser call is a web request. You know, it sends a request to a server. It connects to it. It sends basically usually a query and that returns data often in the form of HTML or it's XML or, or JSON wrapped in XML, um, but it'll display. So here I have my profile. Um, so this is me, right? I'm logged in and this is the critical point of the one of the benefits of using the XML over the Win HTTP request. So what I did earlier was I logged in with my browser and at the same time I had Fiddler running and I watched the traffic and so I have a video on that too, so check that out. But um, in that I got, let's see here, here's my WinHttp request. Um, I, I I have a script that actually rips it out of it, but this is the, the com object, you connect to it, you're navigating to the site. But notice here I'm sending a cookie and a user agent, right? Those are what I got from my Fiddler request. Um, now when I run this, I'm gonna hit the hotkey and I'm gonna run it. And it displays, lo and behold, like basically this page. So here's the normal page. Here I'm just displaying an ActiveX control. And notice right here, you can still see Joe Glines listed, right? So this is saying, hey, you know, we pulled this page, but what would happen if we didn't include the cookies, right? So if I comment this line out, save it, relaunch it, and now when I hit my hotkey, Notice, hey, there's no joke lines, and even down here says this board requires you to be registered, blah, blah, blah. So it didn't see I had my cookies, and it said, hey, wait a minute, you're not joke lines. I, I'm not letting you have access to this web page, right? So that, of course, you can handle, and you could have it where you always go in and grab your cookies from your browser, um, and then, or, you know, and or log in with the WinHTTP request and keep track of them, um, which I find it's not terrible, but it's a little tedious. But let's switch over now to the XML HTTP request. So let me exit out of that script. And this is the other, um, this is the, uh, we're actually using an auto hockey. We use the, uh, the main one is the MSXM L2 uh, request, but it's it's basically doing the XML uh, request and I'm gonna launch this. And now notice there's no cookies here, right? There's, there's no cookies mentioned anywhere. Also, you can send this asynchronous. Here are the parameters to the call. Um, right here where it says asynchronous, we're sending false, so it's not asynchronous. So I'm gonna run this. And, but yet, look, it comes back with Joe Glines. Well, how is it doing that? I didn't send cookies. Well, what's great about this particular MS XML2 request is that it will leverage your browser, your IE cookies. So if you're logged in in, in IE, you don't have to deal with getting the cookies and sending it. It uses the actual cookies on your computer. And so it's really cool because, hey, I don't have to deal with the whole trackling cookies. I have to make sure my browser's logged in, right? But that's a really big advantage to me. Um, there are a couple of detractors. You can't set like redirects. Um, if, if the website has a redirect, you can't control for that. You can't add a couple other headers to it. But the big difference, you know, the other one is this one handles the cookies, the other one doesn't. But let's say, but wait, there's more. Let's say we actually wanted to do uh, the XML, true XML HTTP request. So I have an example of that. I'm gonna, I'm gonna put a zero here. So it, this just says, don't do this part. I'm gonna save it. Now this one down here, I'm gonna turn this on. This one, Jackie uh, Stuck taught me. And uh, basically what you do, I think this is really, really cool. It's one of the great things that with that we can do this with Auto Hockey. It'll literally go out and find this wbgit, goes out and finds your, your current IE window and it will connect to that window, to the frame of that window, <coughs> excuse me, and then it sent, it actually connects to it and uses the real XML HTTP request and will send your request literally from that browser um, you know, window. So let me go ahead and, and launch this. It should come back just the same as before, right? Uh, the difference being we're using this other um, object 
you know, we're connecting to that browser window. So think about how hard this would be for a, um, a website to detect because you're literally sending your query from that browser window. Um, and then you can, you know, parse the data, do what you want when it comes back. Uh, here I have a function. I'm just displaying the HTML. I'll, I'll, I'll try to remember to wrap all this up in, uh, in the code that I share on these, uh, for this post. But to me, that's a, it's a really, really big leg up because suddenly I can literally log in with my browser and then use that page to send API requests um, and ping the server and get results back. They don't know that you're not clicking things and doing stuff, right? It's really hard to detect. So um, yeah, anyway, I hope you enjoyed that. It's a simple, straightforward stuff. Like I said, I have a, a lot of videos on APIs. I even have an API syntax writer. So um, that can help you write some of this syntax. But uh, I, I think, you know, there's there's definitely some huge advantages to doing that XML. So by the way, the uh, the XML request, it's kind of funny because it's it, initially it was created to be um, to just pull XML data. But over the years, uh, it was it was basically used in this as asynchronous JavaScript and XML, which is an abbreviation for Ajax. So that was a new one I learned, too, was, OK, Ajax. I always heard Ajax and Ajax calls. I knew if there was an Ajax call, my web page didn't refresh. There were Ajax calls going in the background and it would dynamically pull different stuff into a page. Um, I didn't understand what the abbreviation was for, but the XML request, you might get JSON data back from it. It's, it's no longer appropriately named. So don't be concerned to say, oh, well, my data is, you know, XML. I'm sorry. It's JSON. I can't use this. Yes, you can, right? Most of the web data nowadays is JSON. It's compared to XML. So I hope that helped. Um, Please like and let me uh, add some comments if you uh, got confused or anything and, and um, are as excited about it as I am. Cheers.